Welcome back to Sub-Zero Hero. Now, I don't want to alarm anybody, but a crime has been committed. Our neighbours, Tromsa, have snuck into our youth academy and they've stolen another one of our prospects that was due to come through in the next youth intake. This is the third time this has happened to me. I thought that now that we were a Premier Division club and Tromsa had been relegated to the division below, I thought this kind of shenanigans was over, but they've been up to their old tricks again. But we're not going to stand for it. As soon as Youth Intake Day rolls around, we're going to try and re-sign this young man back to our academy. But today, well, today we've got more pressing matters to attend to as we're going to check out how we've started our inaugural season as a Premier Division club. Nine games into our Premier Division campaign and things are not going as bad as I might have feared. We're sat in 8th place. The table is pretty tight at half-time during the last fixture. We were actually in the bottom three, but we ended that game on 11 points. 8th place in the table. Not a bad return considering who we've played so far. During these opening nine games, we've played the two clubs that were promoted with us. That's Orlesund and Haugesund. Otherwise, the other seven games we've played are against the seven teams who are now above us in the table. We've played all the big teams, Bode Glimt, Vullerenga, Bran, Rossenburg, Mulder even. We've played the lot. And now we've got a run of games against the teams that are below us in the table. So that gives me hope that we might be able to amass a few more points going into the halfway stage of the season. You will remember that in our last episode, well... It was a little bit of a limp performance as we played Haugesund and we could only muster a nil-nil draw. Given our recent performances against that club, that's the best we've had in a while. But I was a little bit worried when in the next game we're playing Bode Glimp, the defending champions, they beat us 2-0. They beat us pretty comfortably, to be honest. But in our next game, we played the second of those teams that were promoted with us. We were up against Orlesund and Hugo Emper got us a goal. And Trond Agner Bratton, a young defender, got us a goal as well. We were 2-0 up heading into those final stages. They got a late one back to make it a nervy little ending. But we clung on for three points. Now, if you want a little look at the difference in size of the clubs that we're competing with, Orlesund came up with us. They're getting 10,000 supporters for their home games. Now that we're in the Premier Division... Well, we're just nibbling our way over 1,000, so that was good. We played Christiansen next, and they beat us 4-2. It's a reasonably even game. We were in this one for large parts of it. They got a late goal that put a bit of gloss on the performance for them, but it gave us hope. And in the next game, we played Mulder. Now, in real life, this is one of the giants of Norwegian football. Emps got us a goal just after half-time. And that was another three points for us. We've made good progress in the cup. We've gone through three rounds of that so far. And it's helped us with our league form as well. Because after a defeat, we've often had a cup game. Which meant that we could get the morale in the squad back up. So we drew 2-2 with Ord, who are Norway's oldest football club. Empa getting a brace. We lost 3-0 to Bran. This was a bit of a whooping, to be honest. Perhaps not as big a whooping as the one in our next game. 6-2 against Rosenborg. But then we had that cup game to pick the morale back up. And then we had the season definer, potentially. We were 2-0 down pretty early on to Vullerenga. And they were making us look pretty weak candidates. Their goals were good. And we had this against Rosenborg as well, where they were just lashing home efforts from all over the pitch. Their first one was from the edge of the box. Their second one was from even further out than this. And they just had managed to waltz through our defence before spanking efforts past a keeper who may as well not have been there. So we made some changes to this tactic that we were playing. Because I'd noticed in the Rosenborg game as well, that we were conceding a lot of these long-range goals, goals from the edge of the box. And I thought maybe we're just camped out too deep on our own penalty box, not closing them down enough on the edge of the area, making it too easy for them to force efforts home. So we switched back to our 4-4-2 
after about 35 minutes of the Volarenga game, and it worked for us. We played a higher line of engagement, a higher defensive line as well, even though we really don't have the defenders quick enough to play that kind of system. But it allowed us to get back into the game. Gersa got us one back on the stroke of half time. Hugo Riding headed home from a cross from Gersa to put us level. I was settling for a point at that stage against a team that was second in the table. Warden Shurnison had other ideas. Their goalkeeper kicked out a clearance that fell to him on the volley in the centre circle. And he scored the winner. Today we're up against Starbeck, who are in 15th place in the table. Starter then in 16th. Strumgodset are down there in 11th. And then we've got Sarpsborg 13th. We've got the cup game before we play Sanderfjord in 12th. And then we've got Lillstrom in 9th. And we've got Haugerson in 10th. And back to another fixture against Orlesson. And they are down in 14th. So, by the time we get to August and we're back playing the big boys, we really need to have amassed some points to help us secure our place in this division for another season. And it all gets underway against Starbeck today. So before we check out the starting 11 for today's game, let's just have a look at the development of our players because... We've got some interesting little things going on in our squad. First of all, some of the players that came through in the last youth intake that I didn't think much of have been training pretty well. This is Paul Runnigan, who I really don't like this natural fitness of three. And I was concerned that a fairly loyal personality might not be the best to augment his youth development. He's been training really well, playing well for the under-19s, three cup appearances for the first team, He's starting to look all round like a pretty good player. This still concerns me, but I reckon a lot more of these technicals could go into double figures over the next season. Might have another player that may turn out to be useful for us. Also, this player did not come through in the last youth intake. In fact, Kim herram has been with us for a season or so, and I'm trying to develop him so that when Deuce and Ibsen leaves at the end of the season we've got a more technical creative player that might be able to replace him now passing in 12 and vision of 10 granted is not the most creative player you might ever have seen and this flare of two is definitely a cause for concern but after being little more than a bit part making sub appearances for the last season or so he's now played eight games for the first team this season all starts and has looked pretty reasonable. We're going to try and develop him some more as well. Maybe the player that's been developing the best in terms of our youth players this season is Trond Agner Bratton, who, a couple of seasons ago, I was thinking about as a right-back replacement for Mats Nasa when he eventually leaves us on loan. But I actually think centre-half is going to be his position. Six foot three, jumping reach of 14. We're still trying to improve those physicals. And the aggression of five is not brilliant, although, as somebody pointed out in the comments, putting him on a cover duty might just help insulate us from the worst of that poor aggression. We've got other players that came through in the last youth intake who, again, I didn't really pay a lot of attention to at first, but Morton Richardson's training really well. And again, he's got a lot of attributes that look like they're going to go over double figures pretty soon making him look a more all-rounded player. Branded as a promising centre-back at 5'9". I'm not sure he's ever going to play there. But as a midfielder, you never know. He might be a decent defensive midfielder. And at right-back, Oscar Berg is a promising full-back. Determination up to 14. His personality is now spirited. And again, he's just another one of those players. If you imagine all of those 8s and 9s becoming 10s and 11s, Again, might be a player that could feature in the first team for us in the future. If we have a look at our first team, we've got interesting things going on in the development of some of our older players as well. Andre Gerser has spent the last seven seasons with a balanced personality. Well, he's had a little determination bump and now he's up to spirited. So maybe that will help aid his development in his later years. We've also had changes in personality for other players as well. Ola Christian Jensen has been mentored for the last couple of seasons and has gone from balanced to fairly professional 
its determination has gone from six up to ten so that's pretty useful for us as well it's not all good news when it comes to player development gorgeous george has not been blowing me away this season either with his development or with his performances he's played six games for us now got an average rating of just above a 6.5 he's got a good personality but i'm not sure about gorgeous george maybe in a season or so's time the player that might be pro might be promoted to the first team to replace him is justin urgard who again physically is not immense but has got a good personality he came through in the last youth intake he might just develop into a better player than Gorgeous George. We'll have to wait and see. Little Hugo's not training well at the moment either, but his personality's changed. He's gone from balanced to fairly determined. Played well as well, Emper, so far this season. Five goals in the Premier Division, and only one of those has been penalties, and he scored it as well. So we're looking pretty good. If we get into our tactics, then we're going to go with a 4-4-2 today. It's what we switched to against Vullerenga. It got us from 2-0 down to 3-2 up. We're going to try and take it to Starbeck today. We're the home team. They are far lower in the table than we are. We need to get a result today. We're going to see how well we do. We are underway then. We're the home team. Red shorts for us. Blue shirts as normal. The other bit of news to bring you, by the way, is we've made our first ever permanent signing in Sub-Zero Hero, we have brought Ludwig Dreyer back to the club. He's on the bench today. He's made some appearances from the bench. And I think he's been a good signing. He's got his own mentoring group now because he's got a professional personality. He's also a little bit older in that he's 22, 23 years old. So that's good. And we keep getting told in press conferences that the players are pleased with his signing and he's helped reunite the team and bring players closer together. So... Well, that's worked out pretty nicely too. Not necessarily going to be starting many games for us, but he gives us another option from the bench. And he's a player that is going to be oh so useful in just trying to train and mentor some of the players from the under-19 squad that have already come through and might be coming through in the next couple of youth intakes to today's game though. Storbeck are countering on us from a corner. You always fear about hacking them down for a penalty in these kind of situations. Not this time, thankfully. We've got maybe one other thing that's been a little bit of a concern for us. Jonas Hartvigson, eight games this season, no goals. He got a hat-trick for us against a third division side in the Cup. He's done nothing in the league. However, he's now decided that he wants to stay at the club again. He flip-flops on that more often than you can imagine. And he's one of a number of players that have signed new four-year contracts with us. So that's pretty good as well. We've not made the best start to this game. Granted, Starbeck have not had an effort yet, but we've not had that many chances ourselves. So we're going to demand more of them. And we're slinging in a corner. Gers is as good as we can do from corners. And he's only got corner taken of nine. Unless we're going to play little Tony Berg. It doesn't get any better than that, I'm afraid. And that corner comes to absolutely nothing. So we're on the half an hour mark. We've not been that bright, have we? Nessa looks like he's got a little knock, by the way. He doesn't. He's wearing a protective cast on an injured arm. So... Don't worry, he's not picked up a knock in this game. We've already had him playing with this little knock for a couple of matches now. He's got through them absolutely fine. Gersa slings in a ball. I thought we might get on the end of that at the far post. We haven't. Little George. We need to see more from George, by the way. We need him to up his performances a little bit because I'm starting to think maybe he's not going to develop into a first team fullback after all six shots seven shots three on target but i think we're getting into half time without being able to score in fact it might get worse for us they've dinked a free kick in and pedersen another player i'm having doubts about by the way manages to make a save for us so on the xg we're shading it 
but I think we need to go and tell the players that we need an awful lot more from them in the second period. OK, we are back underway and we've made a change as well. Hugo Riding was not playing well out on the left wing. He often doesn't play well out there on the left wing, so we've brought Shurnison on in his place. Shurnison's right-footed, wants to be on the right wing, really. His pace is up to 18 now, though. So we're going to see whether maybe he can have more luck out there than riding. We've slung across in Hartvigson again. Have you noticed him this afternoon? He's done nothing for us so far. He is going through one of his long, barren spells. He was on fire at the end of last season. He has gone very quiet again. And they've got in behind our defence again. And they have had a good effort that has gone wide. Hopefully that's going to sting us into life. This was a game I was penciling in. Maybe another three points. That's a terrible ball forward. We're into the highlights, but I'm not sure it's one for us. What have they got? They've fired it over our defence. We've won it. Hemper's got the ball. Is he going to dink one through? He's not. He's gone for a little run. George, he's dinked one through. Hartvigson, finally! The Jonas brother has got his goal for the season. This is the ninth attempt. Now he's doing the cartwheels. And two players we needed a little bit more from in gorgeous George and Jonas brother Hartvigson have delivered a little bit more. And that's actually... A very neat little finish from Hart Vixen. Now we're in the lead. We're going to pause it there. We're going to throw out a shout of praise. Hopefully that's going to be the right call to make. It's helped with the body language. We're also just having a little look down there. Even though he's got his protective cast on, Nessa seems to be struggling for fitness. I think we're going to have to make a little change in our defence. OK, we've gone for a straight swap. We've taken Nessa off. We've bought on Hugo Nuram Danielson, an unambitious personality. He's a midfielder. We've turned into a right back. And he's going to get a bit of game time for us now. And look at what's gone on next. Hugo's back in the goals again. I think that's six in nine in the Premier Division for Hugo. He's valued at more than a million pounds now, by the way but has just signed a new four-year deal. So unless a bid comes in that is stunning, I don't want Hugo going anywhere. If a bid does come in that's stunning, it may be taken out of our hands by the board. Finances are not looking great again. Building those youth facilities has been costly. and We're back in the overdraft again, and we're also back in a close game because Storbeck have got one back. And we're going to have to demand more. We've only got one substitution up our sleeve. And we might need to stick an extra midfielder on if this stays at 2-1 with 10 minutes left. I'd like another goal. I've thrown out a demand more shout. This would get us up to 7th in the table. We'd be looking healthy. We do not want to give this away. 74th minute. We're into the highlights. Bratton gets up. Shurnison. Again, not seen anything from him since he came on. Here's his pace, though. Can he get back onto his right foot and deliver a cross? He's gone on his left. Gerser's in. Oh, Gerser. Stings the palm of the keeper. God, that annoys me. When a player runs it out for a goal kick or a throw into them, rather than just leaving it to go out of play. Are they going to have a man sent off now? Berg Kavinga, he is. He's gone. That might help us out a little bit. 77th minute now. Gorgeous George. He's gone long again. It's the same ball to Hartvigs and he's in again. He's in again. Oh, and that's more like what he's been producing. Still gorgeous George. He's on a 7.4 now. Much better performance. We asked for one. To be fair to the little man, he's delivered one. Gers is playing pretty well today as well. Can he get the ball in the box? He's gone past his man. He's got another to beat. He can't beat a second. He has won us a corner. And Emper does look like he's in the mood today. In fact, it's a Doy Hansen that gets onto that one. Looking good. Okay, we've got 10 minutes left. I think it's time for our final substitution. Just freshening things up, I think, before we get into the last 10 minutes. 
Okay, the last little change we've made is in midfield. Ludwig Dreyer is on in place of Kim Herum, who was a little bit tired, but was also pulling a 6.8. And was that a cross by Norm Danielson? It was. The guy that's come on to replace Nessa at right back has sent in a great ball. And Jonas is back in the mood. Oh, I would love it if this sparks another of his little goal-scoring runs as we play all those teams that are below us in the table and he could help us rack up some points. We've actually looked all right today, haven't we, in the end? 17 shots, an XG of 1.4. And this looks like it could be a proper highlight, you know, with a couple of minutes left. And here's Schoenerson. He can't get his shot away. We're back in again. We've got a minute till. The five added minutes are up. What have we got? Noren Danielson, who's come on and played well. He sent one forward. Hartfigson's closing it down. Maybe this is going to be nothing more than a full-time highlight, but we have played all right. Also, we've got some teams in our division that just don't seem to be able to win a game. And as long as two teams just carry on losing, well, that's going to do us the world of good. If three teams were just getting beaten every week, it would mean that we weren't going to drop into that relegation playoff place. And I would settle for that. I honestly would. But at the early stages of the season, things are looking like they're going all right. We're going to say, well done, that was a good win. And it's a win that's going to lift us up to seventh place in the table. Some of the teams ahead of us, well, they are very good teams. Boda Glimt are already six points clear at the top of the table. Vullarenga are spending big. Rosenborg are up there as well. Bran are looking like a very good team. But below us, we're now putting a little bit of distance between us and that bottom three who are all stranded on six points. And I think the team that are bottom start is who we are playing next. We're going to go offline, play a few more fixtures. Hopefully, when we come back, we might have made further progress and amassed more points. But... This is Sub-Zero Hero after all. By the time we come back next, who knows? We could be in that bottom three ourselves.